so with stretching, there's kind of three basic categories that we can kind of put them in. So you have static stretching, which is going to be kind of your, you know, if I'm going to do a static um, quad stretch, you know, I'm going to scan and hold this for 15 to 30 seconds. Um, or like a hamstring when we're on the ground, we're going to bend over and we're just going to hold it there. And with static stretching, you're going to want to have a mild discomfort. So you want to feel that pulling, not so much that it's, you kind of feel that tearing sensation if you've ever kind of torn a muscle. But so there's a mild discomfort, so you're getting that stretch in the muscle. You've got 15, 30 seconds, and those kind of stretches, the static stretching is what we want to do generally after a workout. So our body's kind of been warmed up through the workout, and that static stretching is what we're going to do at the end of a workout. And that's what anecdotally can help with kind of muscle soreness and feeling better the next day. It's also going to help really increase our range of motion um, in the long term because that's what's going to elongate those muscles. Um, so static stretching is a big one to do after we work out versus before, because if we do it before we work out, then we stretch out those muscles, and it's going to be a lot harder for those muscles than they contract because they're so stretched out. So it's going to be a lot harder to kind of work them through any type of lift. Um, and so before workout, we really want to do kind of dynamic stretching or the dynamic flexibility, which a lot of us do kind of in boot camp class or the other exercise classes where we're doing that knee to chest or the punter's walk or kind of that lunge and twist. And so with that, we're not trying to necessarily increase our range of motion like in a static stretch. We're getting our body warmed up and prepared for exercise because I'm sure we've all gone trying to work down. We just kind of walked into the gym, done one of these, maybe a couple toe touches, and then we just kind of want to go in and do it. But we feel so sluggish for those first 15 minutes because mentally we're not yet in it yet. We haven't really gotten that core body temperature up. And so that's kind of the purpose of a dynamic warm up or dynamic stretching is get that core body temperature warmed up, you know, get ourselves mentally prepared to work out. And then, so right when we get into it, we're ready to go. We can, you know, give it 100% and we're already kind of into it versus just kind of walking in and being sluggish. Does that make sense? So then a third category is ballistic stretching. And this is one that we generally want to stay away from. And so ballistic stretching would be kind of quick, fast, strong movements. And the idea is try to stretch out those joints. And so if I was going to do, say, a ballistic hamstring, I would be here and I'm going to go back and forth as fast as I can. Yeah. Is it, I mean, this, it's kind of a no-brainer, right? It's probably not the best idea. And so that is a category. It's kind of an old school way of kind of stretching or warming things up, but generally we don't want to do those types of stretches because as you can see, you're just more prone to some type of an injury that way because you're not really warmed up yet and you're trying to force a muscle to do something it's not kind of ready to do, but if we do dynamic stretching or that dynamic flexibility, we're slowly getting into it, getting our body warmed up, and so it's easier to go through that range of 